Transformers fans, I'm Kelly and I am part of the Transformers brand here at Hasbro. And we have a very special guest for you today. A person whose artwork is renowned and beloved all through the world. He's known for Star Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've seen his striking and beautifully stylized designs immortalized in theater poster art and so much more. But now he is bringing his artistic genius to the Transformers universe as we celebrate our 35th anniversary of the Transformers, the movie. And to top it off, he's actually a Transformers fan himself. So please allow me to introduce the one, the only Mr. Matt Ferguson. Welcome, Matt. Hello. It's Hi, so everybody. great to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for spending some time with us today. Um, so we're obviously very excited to have you here. Your art is known all over. Um, more recently for Marvel's WandaVision and Avengers Endgame, and of course, uh, Sony's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So I wanted to just ask you some questions here and was thought we'd start off with how did you get into design and what specifically about poster style art is attractive to you? Uh, well, it's something that I've always sort of been uh, into from an early age. So it started probably when I was a kid going to the cinema, seeing things like, you know, Transformers, um, Star Wars. And, you know, you go down the corridor towards your screen and you'd have the posters either side. In the UK, we have the quad posters, which are these sort of portrait posters. And I just, always, I can remember always just sort of looking at them and really loving them. So there's that. And then I've always been interested in drawing and artwork. So a few years ago, I say a few years ago, 10 or 11 years ago, I started doing um, fan artwork and things like that, posting it online. And then that got traction. And then I started getting hired by studios like Marvel and uh, it was one thing just led to another and now it's sort of what I do. So, not, yeah. not a bad gig. Yeah, so <laughs> a film is obviously a very complex thing and Transformers the movie is a non-stop roller coaster ride. We've got over 50 characters, so many unique elements to pull from. So when you were approaching this design, how did you decide what to focus on and what to prioritize? <laughs> Um, well, I kind of like the brief, I remember that obviously you start with the brief. So I had the brief, which was go with everything, you know, just to make your dream Transformers poster, which maybe they shouldn't have said, but I just want to do everything. And the film is just nonstop. So my first port of call is just to go with my memory of watching it when I was a kid and sort of thinking, what would I like? And I, I, I really like the old uh, one sheets for it from back in the day. So I kind of wanted to give it a retro feel. And then that led on to other things. And then I watched the film itself, obviously, and you pick out scenes that you really like. And there's key, key parts like the fight between uh, Megatron and Optimus Prime. So it's kind of like quite organic process and then we just whittle it down between me and the people I'm working with into what we have made. Nice. So obviously you know you're a Transformers fan you talked about you know growing up and watching it so I'm just curious if there was a moment in time that really drew you into the brand like when did you know you were hooked? Uh, well so I've got two older brothers and they loved Transformers. So I'm a little bit younger. So when I, I was born in 1983 and Transformers obviously 1984, 85 in the UK. So I was kind of too young, but they had it on. So obviously it went in from an early age. And then um, like I've got memories of playing with the toys. So it was the toys first. And I remember really, really wanting an Optimus Prime and I never got an Optimus Prime. and but like my first key memory of the cartoon is actually probably the film uh we we rented it on video and they used to rent it every week and it'd drive my mom crazy because it'd be like are you sure you want to rent this again i'd be like yes i need to see that again because before you could just stream stuff obviously so i was just on rotation rent it every week <laughs> so. 
Yeah. Do you? There's an obsession. Do you remember? Do you remember what your first Transformer toy was? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I th to be honest, I think it was uh, Sludge, the Dinobot Sludge. I've still got it. It's really beat up and old now. But um, yeah, I got that for Christmas. So it must have been like 1985, 86. And I've always loved the Dinobot. And yeah, I got Sludge. That was my first Transformer. Yeah. Super, super, very hardcore G1, true. Love it. Um, so obviously uh, this year marks the 35th anniversary of Transformers the movie. Um, and we've invited you here because we want to share something very special with our fans today as we are revealing for the first time the limited edition steelbook of Transformers the movie, which the artwork was designed and created by none other than Matt Ferguson here. So I want you to have a first look at that. So we've got the steelbook art as well as the 4K DVD version. Um, so they went ahead and restored it with a 4K transfer using the original film elements. Matt created the art for both versions. And I mean, you can see you just simply nailed it for both. You've got explosions and the characters, those pivotal moments, all the overarching visual themes that are necessary to the brand. And you managed to deliver your unique style for the 4K version and then do this really cool minimalist feel for the steelbook. So in looking at those two deliverables, I'm curious how long each of those took um, separately. Uh, well, so the steelbook took less time because there's less characters on it, but it was still quite complicated because me being like a little bit, obviously like a, G a G1 Transformers fan, I kind of wanted the environment to be accurate. So you go scrub through the film and you look at all the, the back plates and paintings and stuff and you sort of realize that it's not the same from scene to scene because they were hand painted. So then I'm like, okay, I've got to get a feel for it. So I made that, the environment in 3D and then drew the characters. So that took a lot of work. And then for the 4K, we were like, let's do everything. Let's have as many characters as possible. So then that that was the real job because it was like, let's have everyone on. And then I was like, I did Devastator down at the bottom holding up Sludge uh, from the fight. And then I was like, yeah, I've got one Dinobot. We should have another Dinobot. So then I added another Dinobot and I was like, but now I've got to have them all. So it kind of like snowballed. <laughs> and then you end up with uh, what we ended up with, which I, I, I am quite happy with it actually which I don't often say about my own work. <laughs> oh, I think you should be very happy with it. So I think based on your answer so far, I might have an idea. And I know you're never supposed to ask a parent which child is their favorite, but when you were drawing this, who was your favorite to draw? Uh, well, it would be the Dinobots, probably specifically Grimlock, because he's a robot T-Rex and it's like the coolest thing ever. I mean. Obviously, the cars turn into robots, and when you're a kid, you're watching that, that's awesome. But then there's dino dinosaurs that turn into robots, and it's like, there's nothing cooler. Nice. Yeah, and I think we've got some of the concept art that you shared with us. Um, I know we've got Grimlock in there. Uh, do you want to kind of talk us through just some of the other concept art and the sketches? And Because I think you applied some interesting techniques to get it to your, your finished look. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, so... Like, obviously, like in the film and in the cartoon, it's like cell shaded. So it, they would do the line art and then they would paint behind and then the backdrops would be painted. And that's how they could animate it quickly back back in the day before computers and stuff. But I always liked that when they did like posters for animated films, that they kind of would give them a painterly feel. Um, so I wanted to give this art kind of like that. So I tried to render them kind of more realistically in three dimensions. So I start with the sketch, which is like the line art, and then I'll build on top of that and layer it up and paint it and add highlights and stuff and try and, and I try to eliminate the hard black lines on all the characters. It's really difficult, like with the faces as well, because the way they're drawn is kind of like impossible because it's a cartoon. So to get the capture the character, you have to sort of cheat as well at the same time. So it's kind of like tug, it was like a tug of war between giving it sort of a realistic three dimensions and 
giving it a painterly, realistic feel and then the cartoon feel. So, yeah, it was an interesting one to work on because it was different to how I would usually work because I don't often do cartoon characters. So, yeah. Nice. So, on knowing that you enjoyed the Dinobots, who was the most difficult to draw? Across the whole project, um, it would probably be Galvatron on the back of the Steelbook. Um, it's obviously a full character, so you've got the whole character to draw. It's not just a part of the body or, or a head. But he's like, the designs for the film characters, the new characters in the film, they were kind of really organic and rounded, and they have like interesting shapes and stuff, but it's harder to get that to look and feel realistic. And he's obviously got like the spikes on his knees and then he's got this crown. And I spent quite a while trying to figure out how to render that realistically in, in 3D and it just didn't look right. And then so what I had to do was go back. This is kind of like when I learned to go back to basics with the art and draw it by hand, but then try and give it a three dimensional feel. And he was really tricky to get looking like how it's kind of like trying to get him to look how you remember them, not how they actually were, which is a weird way of putting it, but that's kind of like the process. And yeah, Galvatron was tricky to get right. Yeah, well, he, he got him to a beautiful point. So I know that this film is obviously near and dear to so many people, and you've done such an amazing job of capturing that epic essence and that totally over-the-top nature of, of this movie as, as so many of other like wild 80s movies. So I'm curious when you were, you know, watching this over and over again as a child, if there was a message from the movie that resonated with you or one specific scene that you just couldn't get enough of. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of like a film of two parts, obviously. So it starts with like the Autobots fighting like normal on the cartoon. And then you, you got Optimus Prime turning up and it's really awesome and he says Megatron must be stopped and he just totally kicks ass and it's really amazing but then he dies and like as a kid that was a real shock because obviously if you've been watching the cartoon it's just like adventure week to week and it's kind of not got those stakes so then you're you, then as a kid you're like oh okay this is the real deal. So there's that, the Optimus Prime scene is one that just sticks out obviously but Weirdly for me, I've always loved how Hot Rod is introduced uh, fishing. It's like so random. So you've got the opening with like Unicron eating like a planet and it's crazy and there's like mass destruction and then cool rock music and then it cuts to this awesome looking Hot Rod car robot fishing with a little boy. It's just... And so, you, so when you're a little kid and you watch it, you. You, you sort of in the, you like Daniel because you think, oh, that could be me. I could get a little robot suit and stuff. So, yeah, and hot rod fishing is something that's just so weird and out there. And it's, it's brilliant that they did it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it's great about the movie. There's so many different unique little slices and scenes in there. Now, were your, so your older brothers, were they also fans? Did you guys watch it all together? Yeah, we used to watch it. So in the UK, it used to be on, I, I, I'm assuming, Saturdays. I can't remember the specifics. I just know it was in the morning. And I can remember that all three of us used to go down and uh, watch it on the TV. Like, And it was it was like done really episodic, the cartoons, uh, the G1 cartoons. And at, at, in my memory, they were like shorter episodes than the full story. So it was kind of like... it you'd have to then come back and watch the conclusion or the next part. So yeah, all three of us really did love Transformers. And they, they don't love it. My brothers don't love it as much as, as I do now, but I think they appreciate that I've stuck with it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. That's, I, I think the movie laid out such an amazing like G1 narrative. It, it really, signal to the world and producers and our children like how iconic Optimus Prime and the Transformers brand had become and that was in, in less than two years and here we are 35 yeah. years later still rolling out um what do you think it is that that's kept you engaged in the fandom this long 
Um, well, I guess it's sort of multiple things, really. Um, there's the there's the toys themselves. So when you're a kid, it's sort of figuring out the puzzle of turning them into um, robots and cars and dinosaurs, obviously. But also, like with the cartoon and the film, they just really stick out as being really awesome, like examples of just over the top entertainment and just like the characters and the iconic designs the way they look like they all have silhouettes and and like even like the colors they, they have distinctive colors so it's kind of like a whole multitude of things go together to make it like like an iconic thing that i've just always sort of really appreciated and i think the design element of it is what I've always really, really liked on across the whole thing from the toys to the to the cartoons as well. Awesome. Well, uh, then I think it's it's time to let everybody in on what's up next. Matt, I cannot thank you enough for your time and sharing your stories and your insight to your process. And obviously, thank you for the incredible work. The artwork is, is just great. Oh, thank you. Honestly, it's been it's been real uh, privilege working on it. And like, if I could tell six year old me, oh, you're going to make an actual poster for this that's up there. Because when you're little, you don't understand that somebody makes it. You just like the thing. So it's sort of it, it is sort of like a dream come true, but also it's not because it's not something I even imagined was possible when I was a kid. So it's like a really surreal experience working on something like Transformers in a really good way. So yeah, thank you. Awesome. So with that, uh, we'll let you know that Transformers, the movie uh, in 4K limited edition steelbook is going to be available for pre-order at shopfactory.com starting on Monday, May 24th. And Fans that pre-order will receive a Transformer lithograph featuring the new art by Matt as a gift with purchase while supplies last. And then the standard edition 4K Ultra High Def will also be available for pre-order later this summer. And it is packed with bonus features and storyboards, deleted alternative and extended scenes. So don't miss your chance to bring home the movie that started it all featuring packaging that goes beyond good beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. Thank you for your time. Till all are one.